First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. Begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. You have an activated pipe in which that produced this black chemical called melanin. We, what we did was gave a hard line in the sand between the different definitions of esoteric study and exoteric study. Playtime is over. All right, you back once again with First Order Radio. Dr. Aleem L. Bay is your host. And I'm getting ready to bring on my co-host, Brother Fahim L. Are you here, brother? Yeah, I'm doing well, doing well, brother. Um, we're going to be dealing with tonight's subject is universal life force energy and the science of breath. Um, All right. Good topic, good topic, good topic. Um, you know, that's how we do. We're going to the deeper sciences. So we're going to start off with, like, how the universe is a conscious hologram. It's an apparent reality that is actually a projected illusion within the hologram. Um, Mm -hmm. It is said that it's a virtual experiment created in linear or what appears to be linear time to study the emotions, which is any energy in motion, which the emotion body is actually an aspect of the soul. Um, Now, how we know that this is a hologram is because um, quantum physicists came to that conclusion based on the fact that I can take a speck of blood, I can take a strand of hair, I can take your spittle and actually clone a whole nother you in existence. Mm. Meaning that every single cell in your body is actually just a smaller version of the big you, which is the whole physical body. So that means the body is a hologram. So the 76 trillion cells that makes up the body is actually on a template or what we call a hologram, but when you look at it, look at it and examine what does a hologram need in order to exist or function, and we know that it's light. Mm-hmm. A hologram can't exist unless there is light. So it makes sense because melanin, which has melanocytes, actually absorb all frequencies of light, whether it's sound vibration, music, as we would say, heat. 
sunlight rays or sun rays, it absorbs all frequencies. That's mm-hmm. within the, even the seven-band spectrum of what we call the visible light. So you're talking about infrared energy, radio waves, TV waves, X-rays, gamma rays, visible light spectrum, which within it is Roy G. Biv, which is red, orange, yellow, um, green, blue, indigo, violet, as well as cosmic energy, gamma energy. It absorbs all these energies. So that's what you need in order to function. As we said before, scientists have stated that 300,000 tons of stardust energy falls to the planet Earth daily. Hmm. So these are stardust particles. Scientists have found out that more than 90% of your physical body is actually made and composed of stardust. You actually are a walking, living star. So, wow. Mm. Right. So this is what people have to understand. So when you study the hologram, which is the so-called matrix, you understand that it's composed of magnetic grids created by a source consciousness brought into awareness by the electromagnetic energy at the physical level. So the hologram is created and is actually linked through a web in which that quantum physicists refer to as the string theory. Now, if you get um, the Nigerian brother, I think his name is Dr. Gabriel Oyibo. He's a Ph.D. in aeronautics and mathematics. He did, um, he's the one who did the book, The Grand Unified Field Theorem, or G-A-G-U-T, in which that he had G-I-J, comma, J equals zero, um, in which that is a grid matrix or grid matrices based on the patterns of sacred geometry. Now, this brother broke down how everything is connected and is linked together. You know, um, as a matter of fact, he showed how there actually is only one element on a particle chart. People speak about the 108 elements on a particle chart. Actually, he states there's only one, and that's hydrogen. Mm. All right, which we know is the first um, element. You know, um, or the other elements is nothing more than a building onto hydrogen. All right, so he's saying basically that hydrogen is the element in which that brought what we now see, touch, taste, and smell, and hear into um, into physical appearance. Right, and we know that hydrogen is a gas. All right, mm. coming from the oh, yeah. research. Right, now, the ancients already knew this, right? The ancients already knew this. Africans um, have spoken about Anansi, the spider. If you, um, the the um, Ashanti of Ghana, you know, speaks of the web of, a, of Anansi, in which that demonstrates to humans how we should be linked together in order to form a unit called a society. Now, this web is spun in which that, you know, cult teachings is the etheric cords or threads in which that runs between people, especially those who are intimately connected, such as within a marriage or boyfriend and girlfriend or either within... um, no, it's, it's in the um, oven. Right, so you got to understand is that, and then uh, when you when you study the Hopi Indians, um, you find that the Hopis from Arizona they speak of the spider um, and the woman's web. Um, you know, the spider's um, web connecting all things in the universe, and how she. Pre- um, presents or is present at the creation of the universe and how she fashioned the first humans from out of clay into which life was created at sunrise. Now, that is basically the same thing that we find within the scriptures or within the first chapter of Genesis. All right? So it's believed that we are linked by spider-like strands 
to each animated or inanimated object in the universe. So we are actually similar to that spider that sense vibration when one strand of the web is disturbed. We know in the occult teachings that for the soul to leave the physical body upon death, the etheric cord, which is called the civil cord in Ecclesiastes, is actually cut. Right? Mm. Now, this is within the occult teachings. Um, a good book to get, um, number one, is the Bible. Go to the book of Ecclesiastes, where it speaks about the civil cord. Um, number two would be um, the etheric double by A.E. Powell. Um, and another one of his books, which is called Astral Body by A.E. Powell. Okay? He was part of the Theosophical Society of the Man of Avasky, who, which, which is nothing more than a Rosicrucian um, sect or order. Right. Okay, so we find out is that this web reflects the colors that we present at the time of creation of the universe. And she's also the mother of the twin war gods, which is actually duality. All right, so this hologram had a beginning and it has an end. And as consciousness evolves into the alchemy of time, and as the grids collapse, everything within the hologram will end. All right, or, and I want to say the word, and I don't want to say the word end per se, it will merge into another universe. All right, because um, it is said to be a multiverse in which that numbers up to 144,000 um, universes. All right, um, in the field of hyper dimensional physics, it is stated that quantum physicists have found at least 27 different dimensions. At least 27 different dimensions, all right? Um, each dimension would be somewhat the equivalent to a universe within itself. So they have found in essentially um, 27 universes, um, as we can say, or parallel worlds, all right? Whatever term that we want to use, it is something that is outside of the perception that we have grown accustomed to, Okay? So, we have to understand we live in a hologram. That is what is called the matrix. And how intricate, um, you know, within this holographic spell, uh, we find that there's the notion that duality or polarity are um, actually natural aspects of life. And that we must serve one side of duality or the other. All right? Um that that is the spell. All right, that actually is the spell. All right, we have lost sight of the hologram altogether in that sense, and have come to believe that it's the sum total of reality. But if you get the book, the holographic universe, written by Michael Talbert, um, they break it down that we take for granted that we exist as three D um, beings in the third dimension. But the physicists suggest that our world is just a projection, you know, like I said, um, of what reality appears to be, in which that is supposedly was written in the second dimension. So there's a scientist by the name of Rick um, Henson. He commented and said that I'm, I'm 2D living in a 3D holographic projection at the end of what is space, what about black holes storing up data on the outside of its shells or shell and that we are all just projections of the 2D data stored in the black holes and space time is is usually understood to describe space existing in three dimensions with this play of the role of a fourth dimension all right and and all four come together to form a continuum or a state in which the four elements can't be distinguished. Now, we understand there was a group back in 1969, we speak about this, or uh, spoken about this before, and 
the name of the group is the Fifth Dimensions. It was Marilyn McCool right. and her crew, and her crew, in which they had the song "The Age of Aquarius," in which that um, they were singing about how this new age has come in. So, the indigenous people around the world have stated that, um, like for example, if you go to India, they have what's called the Kali Yuga Age. Well, Master Sanyata Saraswati, Grand Master, 10th degree, um, Dan Black Sash, who was my teacher, told me that the Kali Yuga Age was ending and the Sata Yuga Age is beginning. Now, the Omex, which is um, the actual writers of the Mayan calendar, as they refer to it as, actually, as we know, is the Omekian calendar, um, stated that December 21st, 2012, was the beginning of this new age. Um, the indigenous people around the world, whether it's in Australia, amongst the Aborigine, Africans, or Native Americans, um, here, they all state within their culture that we are moving um, from the third dimension into the fifth dimension or the fifth world, as they refer to it as. The Bible, mm -hmm. in the book of Revelation, states there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. So all of these things coincide, and all the ancient people speaks about this, and this time is now. So what we understand is that as we move into the fifth dimension now, let, let, let me explain this, because... People don't understand what these various dimensions are. All right? Um, we would say, like, for example, the third dimension, of course, is length, width, and height. All right? The fourth dimension is actually time and space. And the fifth dimension is um, light or energy. The sixth dimension is gravity. Now, the first and second dimension, first dimension would be um, a blank slate, as we would say, in which that nothing per se is written upon yet. However, the second dimension would be what you place upon that blank slate in which that um, you get a two-dimensional, just like if you get a pen or paper or a um, pencil and paper and you write the pencil upon the paper, you have just created a two-dimensional apparent reality. Mm -hmm. uh, when I go and get the material in order to copy um, what I see upon that um, paper, then I make it into a three-dimensional reality, apparent reality. So this is how the dimensions are built upon each other. Okay? So we understand that the scriptures also speak about the fact of this kingdom of God. And um, we know that within Luke 17, 21, it speaks that the kingdom of God is within you. All right. So uh, we know that the kingdom of God actually is the state of mind, which is the Christ mind. All right. Christ being Kares from ancient Kemetic um, or ancient Tamerian philosophy, in which that Kares means the mummified body of Osiris, which actually is the soul embedded inside of the pineal gland that must be awakened. And it is his bride in which that awakens the bridegroom. So Osar is awakened by Osset as he travels through the seven caves, all right, which is the seven chakras, to awaken him in the seventh layer, which is actually the third ventricle. And it is there you know, that he is awakened to become Heru, all right? So the sleeping soul is our saw, Lord of the underworld, the subconscious plane. But upon awakening, that conscious power comes to consciousness and becomes Heru, which is the living Christ, all right? This is what this is really all talking about. So it is but the universal mind personified, mm -hmm. all right? a state of knowing that God is the I am within us. Therefore, the kingdom of God is actually synonymous with God consciousness. All right, so know that the mind is unseen in and out the temple. All right, in other words, the physical body is the temple. All right, and you can have out-of-body experiences or near-death experiences or either at the point of death, 
the cord is cut, which is called the ethereal cord, and the soul travels on without the temple. All right? We understand that if you go to Romans fourteen seventeen, it says the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Um, so it's a state of mind. That's what we're talking about, which is actually, like I said, synonymous with God consciousness. All right? And I'm not here to, um, you know, biblically, you know, hit y'all, you know, with everything, but we're trying to analyze, you know, what we really mean here by the universal life power or universal life energy and the science of breath. So we got to establish um, this universal energy and what it is and how it's projected into this realm of this so-called matrix. So that's why we've been dealing with that information in the beginning, showing you how quantum physics correlate to Taoism, correlates to Buddhism, correlates to Hinduism, correlates to Christianity, correlates to Islam, correlates to Judaism, because there's a common thread that runs through all of them, and that is talking about God is everywhere. So if you say God is everywhere, then describe God. What is you really talking about? What is the template in which that is used to mm -hmm. understand God? So man can understand God. All right, or Elo, or Elah, or Allah. All right, whichever term you want to use. Um, so, all right, so um, we understand that when you read that Luke seventeen twenty one, as I said, Jesus said neither. Um, neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So God resides within you. The Holy Spirit resides within you. Jesus Christ resides within you. And understand, this is nothing more than our set, our saw, his rule, the Holy Trinity. All right? One and the same. And when they combine, which is mother, son, and child, or as they say, the Holy Spirit, Father, and Son is all within the temple of God, which is the physical body. All right? You don't understand that? Go to 1 Corinthians 3.16. It says, Do you not know that your temple of God, that you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells within you? It's right there. Mm. You know, you go further into uh, 1 Corinthians 6.19.20, and it says, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you And it says Therefore glorify God In your body So you glorify God In your body Second Corinthians 13 Father says Or oh, do you not know yourself That Jesus Christ Is in you So The spirit of God Which is the Holy Spirit God And Jesus Christ All is within you The scriptures say it out Plainly Within Corinthians First and second Corinthians So they have made these things exoteric, made it as if it's something outside of you and you have to go in search of outside of you, always in constant search, never find it. Right. The key is to understand that um, in order to draw forth this energy, this universal life force energy, is through actually the science of breath, which if you go to Genesis, it says God breathed into the nostrils of man and made man a living soul. All right, so what did he breathe into the nostrils? Breathed of itself into the nostrils. That God consciousness once again. All right, so, you know, as we continue on, we have to understand that, you know, to the fullest. Um, Brother L, you got anything to uh, speak on before I go? Uh, into uh, the yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, uh, I was thinking about the, uh, the melanin that most of most most of us should have inside of us but but it amazes me how a lot of our people, especially during the summer months uh how they seek for shade so much instead of absorbing the solar energy that right. they should be absorbing you know right. uh, oh it's so hot, it's so hot I'm getting out of the shade and the shade, and I watch them and I say that's just Sometimes it's just myself that's in the absorbing the solar energy. That's well. That's the reason. That's because I have uh, knowledge of what the sun and what we are supposed to be about as relating to the sun. And most of them don't. For one, uh, I think it's due maybe to a lot of their uh, eating habits, uh, their lifestyle that they live. 
<coughs> and uh, excuse me, and uh, that causes a lot of that, you know. So, uh, uh, and also the breathing techniques, like you just spoke a couple of seconds ago about the breathing techniques. A lot of us don't really know how to breathe correctly, right. you know, and that causes uh, a lot of bad thoughts, uh, which is causing diseases, you know, among the people, sicknesses, and so forth. Right. Right. Well, we know that the first force is called the universal or the original force, which within Taoism is called Wu Qi. All right? Um, and is also known as the heavenly energy. In the Vedic teachings, um, it's called Saraswati, meaning nothingness or the essence of the self. In the Hindu mythology, um, she is the um, divine um, wife of Brahma, the creator of the universe, so she's the creatress. Saraswati symbolizes the creative power of Brahma. Now, biblically, that's Abraham and Sarah, whose names was Abram and Sarai. All right? So these same names is within Hinduism. In Buddhism, it is called the state of Nirvana. So we understand that it manifests as the energy of all the stars, planets, and galaxies. All right? That's what this original or universal energy is. Mm -hmm. And we already broke down how it's projected uh, through this matrix, but its original intent of this visible spectrum, if you go and do your research, is black energy or what is called dark matter. So this black energy makes up about 70%, all right, of what we cannot see, this hidden force or power or substance. Mm -hmm. All right. Then the other um, 25% is made up of dark matter. And then right. the other 5% or so is made up of what we call the visible spectrum. That's everything that we can see planets, moons, stars, asteroids, comets, etc. Suns, which is stars. All right. And there are different various stages of, of stars. Supernovas, uh, 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 you know, whether it's blue, yellow, white, red stars, etc. All right, yellow stars. All these stars exist, so everything exists within the visible spectrum, and that's only about five percent. Mm -hmm. right? Some say go as high as ten percent. All right, but we know that at least sixty-five to seventy percent is is um, black energy or black light mm -hmm. and then we know about um, 20 to 25 percent is dark matter so combined that is 90 to 95 percent of what we cannot see that correlates to the 90 percent of unused DNA mm -hmm. That goes into also the 90% of unused brain potential. So that means in order to bridge the gap between what you cannot see, you must raise the light through those seven chakras in order to activate the God consciousness because mm. God dwells within the treasures of darkness. If you go to the book of Isaiah, that's what it says, that God dwells within to, um, darkness and he would give man the treasures of darkness okay so we're talking about that the real God alright dwells within that black light that dark mm -hmm. matter and of course we understand is that the physical um, representation of that is the melanin mm -hmm. melanin is the physical representation of the um, black light or black energy and the dark matter okay mm -hmm. So we understand yeah. that this we understand that within that realm of five percent of what we can see, which is the manifest of energy of all the stars, planets and galaxies, that there's a vast energy which is all pervading force that nurtures the mind, the soul, the body, and the spirit of each individual. Everything else in the universe that is manifest. So the word prana itself comes from the Sanskrit, which word pra 
means first, and na means the smallest unit of energy. All right, this is like what we would call atoms or quarks, which is atomic and subatomic particles. Mm-hmm. Right, which correlates to the sun dust particles that we're talking about that falls to the planet Earth daily. So prana is the life force that is responsible for forming and regulating energy into the form of matter. Okay, that's that's what we have to understand. So right. um, a doctor by the name of um, Frank Barr, he stated that the more complex an individual is and their capacity to absorb light is what evolutes them to the next level of species. Mm -hmm. In other words, you just don't stay homo sapiens sapiens. In other words, you've been taught in school that there was a homo erectus, and the homo erectus became the homo sapien. Then the homo sapien became the homo sapiens sapiens. Well, that means that the homo sapiens sapiens must become something else. Well, come to find out that all the ancients speak about this jump in evolution from a two-strand DNA to a 12 strands DNA, physical, and then 12 strands etheric, etheric, etheric um, DNA. So that means that we would jump from a homo sapiens sapiens to become a homo Christos, which means the same as Christ, meaning the true term of the word Christian, which means what? To be Christ-like, which means that you develop those gifts, and which that is mentioned within 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, where it speaks about the gift of healing, the gift of miracles, the gift of prophecy, the gift of knowledge, the gift of wisdom, the gift of faith, the gift of discerning the spirits, the gift of speaking in tongues, the gift of interpreting tongues. Those are the nine gifts of Christ, or the nine fruits of Christ. And you will gain all of those abilities. So now we understand the reason why you have to um, pollute the air with chemtrails, pollute the water with fluoride, uh, which calcify the pineal gland. Um, the chemtrails can give a person a skin disease, in which that is called uh, morgellin, um, in which that is like a flesh um, um, bacteria eating um, mm. bacteria, um, mm. a flesh eating bacteria. All right, um, so that you can't use your melanin to the highest um, quality, quantities and quality. Um, right. And now, that's dealing of course, with the medic. Excuse me. Uh, that's dealing right. also with the medication a lot of our people are taking. Mhm. That uh, exactly. doctors are administered to them. I, I thought so. As well as also the foods in which that has genetically modified organisms, and like mm-hmm. you said before. If it's genetically altered or genetically modified, then, of course, they tell you exactly what's going to happen as you consume um, those are actually viruses, as they will really want to say, in which that can actually change your DNA. Mm. And um, you have what's called telomeres, which um, when you eat these foods, shorten your telomeres, which means essentially that it shorten your lifespan because... Mm. As you practice the various um, sciences such as Qigong, the Tai Chi, or Reiki, or Pranic Energy, anything dealing with energy modality, what those um, sciences do is lengthen your telomeres, which means it gives you a longevity, it gives you health, it gives you rejuvenation, a regeneration, a revitalization, re energizing um, your physical structure, which is the temple of God, as compared to the genetically modified foods compared to um, the fluoride and the chemtrails, which damages Mm -hmm. your temple of God. So we understand what they're trying to do, all right? Um, But as it states within um, 1 John 4, 4, greater is he within you than he that is in the world, all right? So if you understand the concept of how great we actually are, you will actually see that prana actually is a form of love. In other words, the more prana that you breathe, and what people don't realize is that if you read the book um, 777 by Alice O'Crawley, or the writers of Alice O'Crawley, um, he states in there that the word Jesus Christ breaks down to the geometry of the numeral 888. Mm. 
888, in which that is eight protons, eight neutro, um, neurons, and eight um, electrons. Now, when you go to the periodical chart, you will find if you go to the eighth element on the particle chart, that's oxygen. No coincidence, that's oxygen. And oxygen breaks down to what? Eight protons, eight neurons, neutrons, and eight electrons. Eight, eight, eight. So oxygen is Jesus. That's what people don't understand. But the ancient Egyptians understood that because they said that his name is Shu. And Shu means he who raises up. Shu mm. is known as the personification of air. Mm. Shu is the god of air, which is the wind and sunlight, which is fire, just like Jesus is. Jesus is called the light of the world. When Jesus came into the book of Acts, he blew upon his disciples, and they received the Holy Spirit. He blew. So he is the god of air. Now, when you check out air, air is 20% oxygen, 79% nitrogen, and 1% inert gas. And the lungs purifies the bloodstream. Okay? Now, what do nitrogen do? Nitrogen ignites. All right? When you have dynamite, the major component of dynamite is nitrogen. And when it's sparked, it ignites or ignites. It blows. It explodes. Well, when you take in oxygen, this nitrogen and inert gas um, sparks light into your cellular structure. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm talking about qu what quantum physics Physicists are now beginning to understand what is taking place in the human body. So as you breathe that's, in, mm -hmm, go ahead. Yeah, that's uh, that's why we should be able really to heal ourselves. You know, like what you're saying, uh, to be our own doctors and physicians. Uh, I was reading something here, if I may quote uh, one little paragraph here from David Ice's book, uh, uh, and the truth shall set you free. And he says here, this is why we think of ourselves as ill and think of ourselves as healthy. Our emotions stimulate and release chemicals into our bodies, which have positive and negative physical effects. Laughter is a great healer because of the chemicals it releases, and hatred and anger and fear and guilt causes diseases for the same reason. And that's true. You know, yeah. The health is actually free, and we will be able to regenerate ourselves by our own thoughts. Ain't that that's something? True. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And so that's why when you study these energy modalities, you find out that energy follows thought. Within the um, Nation of Islam teachings and Nation Gods on Earth, we know that within the student enrollment lessons, or the 120, it speaks about the fact that thought travels 24 billion miles per second. Mm -hmm. Light only travels 186,000 miles per second. So light, which is energy, follows the thought because thought is stronger or, or is faster than light or energy. So you find out that prana is the universal life force energy, and it's the sum total of all the forces in nature. So the breath, which is air oxygen, is the external manifestation of prana. Heat, light, electricity, magnetism are also manifestations of prana. But exercise and control of your breath, you can control the subtle prana internally. All right? So control of prana means the control of the mind. Mm -hmm. The breath directed by the thoughts under the control of the will is a revi is a vitalizing, regenerating force which you can utilize consciously for self development, for healing many incurable diseases in your system, for healing others and for other various useful purposes, such as manifestation. 
thought manifestation. So, um, no doubt what you're saying is uh, right on point. And what mm-hmm. we've got to realize is that prana is not the mind or the soul, but rather the force or energy through which that the soul manifests its activity, and the mind manifests its thought. All right, in the occult, it is called the astral light, and the word astral means star. So hence, star light, star bright, first star I've seen tonight. All right, the little saying is, is told true, and that actually is prana. Mm-hmm. All right? So those who do not possess a healthy amount of melanin cannot experience, you know, and make, you know, um, or manifest, make manifest from the astrolite as those who do. All right? So this is why they're trying to, um, as we awaken, they're trying to damage the melanin as much as possible through those particular means, through the calcification of the pineal gland, through um, the dis-ease of the skin, mm-hmm. through... Um, you know, through the genetically altered food within the DNA, um, yeah. which acts as stoppers to the growth or the expansion mm-hmm. of your DNA. This is where all these yeah. things are taking place. Vaccinations and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And, you know, all these, uh, taking all these shots, you know, for flu shots, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, pneumonia shots. And uh, right. all these other kind of shots, really, they're all designed and created to uh, knock down our, our, our capacity to use our melanin to absorb a lot of these uh, neg- uh, entities from the sun. Exactly. You know, so it, it uh, another paragraph I was reading also, a small paragraph, uh, it says, our bodies age and become infirm because that is, the reality program into the hum- human mind, and that is the reality we create. We don't have to age in the way that we do. Our thoughts ensure that we age, age, not our bodies. The power of thought to heal the body is somewhat the direct lo- parenthesis global elite. Our bodies are going through incredible changes, and that and this will increase with each year. So that's the end of that paragraph. Exactly. Right, uh, right. So so basically that's what we have to understand, Brother L, is that this material world, which is called within the Hebrew Ashia, all right, or Asia, is established in the astral world. Mm-hmm. So the prana is the stream that runs the physical and the emotional mental machinery of life. It's the substance of the human aura. The mm-hmm. colors of the mental state are manifest in that substance. If there's a book called The Human Aura, Astral Colors and Thought Forms, and it's written by um, Swami um, Panjadasi. All right? Um, people can get that book. And what we realize is that the mind cannot operate without the help of prana. Therefore, prana mm-hmm. also is the sum total of all latent powers mm-hmm. and forces which are hidden in man and woman, mm. and which lies everywhere around us. So all the forces, all the powers, and mm. prana springs from the fountain or a common source. Now, the name of it is Atman. All right, Atman is Atma, which is Atum, which is Adam Cadman, all right, um, which actually derived from the dark energy in turn from dark matter, as we were talking about earlier. Those are just the names that they have used in the ancient um, Sanskrit, Vedic Sanskrit, or indo um teachings, as well as also within the Hebrew, um, the Kabbalistic teachings, mm-hmm. right? Um, if you get a book by Deepak Chopra, uh, I think the name of the book is called Quantum Healing. Um, he wrote of a of scientists who studied the behavior of monkeys on the coast of Japan, and mm-hmm. a particular monkey... Um, had began dipping his sweet potato into um, the salt water to wash it off because it was dirty before eating it. Soon, all the monkeys within the colony was dipping their potatoes into the salt water. Mm. The scientists thought that, you know, at first the scientists thought that the monkey was just copying each other, but they soon discovered in other parts of the world that the monkeys have also began dipping their 
potatoes into the salt water too. <laughs> so the monkeys, so the monkeys was communicating through an unknown intelligence across time and space through some form of intelligent energy, which of course is called collective consciousness, which you can tap into through the breath, the spirit, gas, you know, etc. All right, so we have that same ability. You know, matter of fact, when you come in contact with um, an advanced master or an adept and they have Mm -hmm. worked on their auric field, a person can actually walk, you know, within three feet or more of their auric field and actually become healed just by walking in their auric field or become activated. Their kutalini can become activated just by um, a touch of that master or just a look of that master or even being blown to breath by that master onto them. Okay? So we Mm. receive chi in many ways. Right. All right? Now, we know that there's what is called prenatal chi, which we receive from our mothers and fathers before birth. All right? There is postnatal chi that we uh, receive mainly through food, water, or breath. Um, after we are born, mm-hmm. all right, this life force energy is in every atom of space, all right? As a matter of fact, the atom itself is empty space or what appears to be empty space, all right, in which that the atom itself is 99.9999% empty space. Right. So if it's empty or what appears to be empty, which basically means that it's passive, how do you make that kinetic? You have, must spark something into it. There must be mm-hmm. a spark into it. So um, this is how you develop, you know, this this energy. So it comes up, uh, we know that chi comes up from the earth and into our bodies through our feet. It comes down from the heavens, enters through our crown at the top of the head. So this life force body is the flow of the creator in us. It gives life to the physical body. Without it, we would die. So this life force um, body or etheric body is an exact replica of the physical body. Um, Your etheric body is about two inches above the physical body right now, and it's the color electric blue. Right, and it flows along um, these invisible wires, as we say, or pathways called the meridians. Now, we know that in Chinese philosophy, um, you have six meridians on your right, six meridians on your left, and there's two central channels, or what appears to be two, actually, is actually one, but they call the Du and the Ren. D-U and REN, R-E-N. You have what is called your conceptional or functional vessel or channel, and then you have your governing function, um, excuse me, your governing channel or vessel. Your governing vessel runs up from the perineum to the top of the head down the face. That's the governing vessel or channel. Then from the face down, the middle of the body back to the perineum runs the conceptional or functional vessel. All right. Your tongue goes up to the roof of your mouth behind your teeth, and you pull up your anal muscles. By doing so, you create the loop or connecting piece between both of those channels to become one channel called the microcosmic orbit. And you channel energy from the navel down to the perineum as the man up the back of the spine to the top of the head and back down the front of the body. For the woman, the energy is collected within the navel up the center piece or the central point of the body up to the top of the head on the inhale and then on the exhale down the back of the spine back to the perineum and you circulate the energy in that way. So the women circulate the energy um, in the opposite direction as the man. Mantak Chia was tempted to was attempted to suppress the energy of the woman by making her Kundalini or Shakti force go in the exact same manner as the man instead of making it go backwards from us, Mm. which is 
if you notice, what I'm talking about is actually the symbol of what is called the yin and the yang. And when they come together, produces that connection of a whole or complete circle. All right? Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, that's that's what's really going on, and we have to understand that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it's de- like it's dealing with the uh, also with the uh, the DNA, how to uh, deal with the, like the fourth dimension, uh, mm-hmm. and it's the way to get to the fourth dimension. You know, right. a lot of us uh, they so deal they're just so steep into the third dimensional uh, sphere. You know, uh, with material sex. Uh, you name it, you know, and they don't, they just can't seem to let go of it. And as long as they right. uh, have that kind of, uh, uh, what you say, that kind of mentality, they never will get to the fourth or fifth dimension and beyond. Right. Because of, of the world that they hold on to so uh, much so dear, you know, uh, they feel like they want to miss uh, miss out on something, but they're not missing, missing out on anything because of... Uh, mm-hmm. It says here, uh, says, or rather the machines uh, will be able to talk to them. People with satellite television are amazed to find that their individual decoder cards can be programmed for the TV headquarters. And that's true, you know. Uh, have you ever just tried to talk to someone? Uh, and what is this kind of with mind control, too? If you're trying to talk to one or say someone, even may yell at them. And they and they are still watch, watching that television. They're so glued to it, you know. And I was explaining to my little young niece because they're under hypnosis. And she said, "What?" I said, "They're under hypnosis. You know, uh, the TV is hypnotizing them. It's, they're being programmed, and uh, this is part of uh, it's part of the whole thing. Like even dealing with the chemtrails, the whole thing." To uh, destroy our mind, uh, our ability to think for ourselves, uh, to heal ourselves, uh, to teach ourselves and our children and their children and their children's children, you know, all this is to uh, to prevent this from happening. But I'm with uh, with Deborah. Well, what Dr. Deborah Blair said is like a a, a ant trying to stop a tidal wave. You know, because the consciousness is out here so heavy and so deep, you know, it can't Uh be stopped, you know. You still there? Yeah, we're here. Yeah, I hear a click. Okay. Uh, 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 I was reading earlier that our ability to heal ourselves through laughter, which is a good healer because it releases a lot of positive energies and uh, positive energies to others, you know, and to heal others. You know, and that this is what the uh, the medical uh, profession, among their elite uh, 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 partners, don't want us to know. You know, because they know if we, uh, we get hold of that kind of science, the game is over. Right, right. Well, I mean, speaking of a book, um, let's go to the Moorish Holy Quran, Circle Seven, where it speaks about in Chapter Seven, the friendship of Jesus and Lamas, where um, Jesus broke down that. Uh, the holy breath is truth. It is, mm-hmm. which was, and is, and evermore shall be. It cannot pass away. And Lamar says, you answer well. Now what is man? And Jesus said, man is the truth and falsehood is strangely mixed. Hence the mm-hmm. lower self and the higher self. But he goes on to say that man is the breath made flesh. Mm-hmm. So what makes the flesh is the breath. You don't believe exactly. it? Oh, I mean, think about it. Um, your physical body is called composition. It is composed because mm-hmm. of breath. When the breath leaves, it decomposes. Mm-hmm. Okay? That's simple as it is. So when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man can come to unto the Father but by me, it's saying that, The breath is the mediator between the lower and the higher self. That's the breath. Exactly. 
How we know that is because the breath of life or is Jesus called allegorically, Jesus is called what? The breath of life or the word made flesh. That's why I was talking exactly. about the geometry in the Kabbalistic um, numerology. It says the um, number for Jesus Christ is 888, which is ironically oxygen, which is the eighth element, <laughs> which has eight electrons, neurons, um, neutrons, and um, eight protons. So the mm-hmm. breath of life is in each and every one of us. So it is the truth that we have um, never been without Yahshua. All right. So when Christians say that and we've never been that um, that Jesus always existed, that's really what they're saying, but don't realize it because they have anthropomorphized a fictitious character called Serapis. Mm. Mm. But what they're saying is true, but they don't know the the. Um, the um the validity of it, you know how how valid it is. Mm. That is true. You know, so um, it says See, a lot of us are uh, uh, deal with the lower self, and that that lower self is called fear as well. In order to, we never will little be it. that's another uh, factor why a lot of us will never be able to heal ourselves. Um uh it, it, it says here, when you connect with with that love without uh, what they love without judgment or condition, there simply is no fear or guilt. You know there's nothing to fear. It is of it is of our own creation and it is within the power of our hearts and minds. To uncreate it. Now, that's a powerful, mm. powerful statement. No. He is right. But, and the thing is that the reason why we no longer have the ability, as it seems, to change things at will is because if you get the book called Unk, written by, um, the introduction was written by Samaj, um, Heru um, Samaj, um, mm-hmm. the husband of Queen Afua. It was written by Nur Unk Amen. In the book, mm. he says that in the third dimension, melanin has an energy gap. So that means there's a gap there. Now, how do you fill up that gap? You have to fill it up by way of absorbing more light energy so that there is no um, gap any longer, and the melanin is no longer acting as a semiconductor. You want your melanin to act as a superconductor. Mm-hmm. Now... If you go to the chapter of the given air and um, Karet Netter from the Book of the Dead or the Book of Coming Forth by Day and Night, um, in there it says, I am Shu. I draw air from the presence of the light God, which is Ra, from the utmost limits of heaven, from the utmost limits of earth, from the utmost limits of the peon of the Naba bird. Mm-hmm. The Naba bird is the Bennu bird. All right? Um, which, of course, we know within the um, Phoenician and Greek is called the phoenix, mm-hmm. which means the one who rises from the ashes, which is talking about the Kundalini. The ashes is a physical body because, as it says, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. That's what the physical body goes back to. But the soul must rise from the physical ashes, you know what I'm saying, or from the ashes, and that's what it's talking about, so that... That rising bird or that phoenix is talking about the soul itself in which that su- um, survived the physical body as well as what we call survived death. Mm-hmm. You know? And um, we get the same story in a sense in Genesis, the 28th chapter, 12th verse, where it says, Behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to the heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. The angels of God is talking about the angels of light, which is... Um, the Kotalini Shakti energy coming up through the Shoshuna, which is the hollow area in the spinal column, along with the activation of the Ida and the Pingala. And as mm. three serpents or snakes um, are activated, this goes back to Moses casting down his staff, eating up the two serpents in which that was cast down by Pharaoh's uh, mag- um, magician. So those three serpents symbolizes the one plus two um, sacral nerves called the Shoshuna, the Ida, and the Pangala. Mm. All right? And when they are fully activated um, and they travel up Jacob's ladder, which is the spinal column, um, which is also 
Somebody said Jesus died on the cross at the age of 33 years old because you have 33 vertebrates. Um, and then Jesus getting crucified and giving up the ghost, symbolic to um, the lower self, no longer existing, but had to merge in with the higher self, you know, which is symbolic to that Holy Ghost or that heavenly um, sphere, you know, or realm. You know, this is what is really um, going on, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I, I was reading something here from your book, uh, the First World Order, dealing with light. It has here, uh, Lucifer, Lucifer is the Latin name, or to say the Moorish Latin name, of the archangel, angel, Uriel. Uriel is Hebrew, and it means the five of God, or the light of God. In the Holy Bible, Old Testament, Isaiah 14, 12 to 15, it states, How art, how art thou fallen from heaven? That's the crown chakra. O Lucifer, son of the morning, Kundalini Shakti, or the Prana, the prana is the all-pervading energy of the universe. In bodily form, it is the most dense form. It is the red color energy at the root base chakra called the red dragon. Its negative, negative qualities are self-centered, insecurity, violence, greed, anger, Overly concerned with one's physical survival, how how thou cut down to the ground, but you're talking about matter with parentheses, which didst weaken the nations, for thou hast said in thine heart, parentheses will, I will ascend into heaven, spinal column, because you're coming through the spinal column, ascending through the crown chakra. That's what you're talking about, isn't it? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. I will now, exalt my throne. Now, well, go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Okay. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Seven chakras. I will sit down. I will sit upon the the mount of congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Bring cerebrum, cerebrum. That's the end of the chapter. I mean the paragraph. Right. Exactly. Now. We, I understand that because these stories are written as codes for the physical body, but you can't get to that level of understanding until you have um, done much meditation, you have um, read the appropriate um, books on esoteric information, you know, such as um, one of the best books I would recommend is called um, The Twelve Powers of Man written mm. by um, Charles Fillmore. He wrote another book called The Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. Okay? Okay. And I would recommend that. Now, you also have The Flower of Life um, books written by Dravalo Malchizedek, Volume 1 and Volume 2. Now, it speaks about that prana, not only is the universal life force energy, the cosmic regenerative force in which originally was drawn down through the prana tube, all right, which was once the soft spot on the top of the head, which is called the an um, the anterior fontanelli, all right, or fontanelli. Now, when the tube was drawn energy down from the cosmos or from the sky, from the heavens, um, and drawing energy up, from the ground, through the legs, through the perineum, through this tube, um, it produced the flow of DMT. All right, now, everybody know that when children are from the age of, um, coming out the womb to the age of seven, um, that soft spot on their head um, can actually become sunken from dehydration. All right, well, when that child um, have drunken enough um, water or milk, you know, um, it begins to solidify and become hardened. By the time that the child is seven, you know, it's just like what my grandma told me, go sit your hard-headed ass down somewhere. So <laughs> <laughs> by seven, <laughs> by seven, you know, it's hard, all right? Well, during that time period, you're still able to gather 
prana through that tube and through that area in the brain or mm. of skull. This is why Jesus was crucified on Mount Golgotha, which means the place of the skull, which they refer to in the Bible in, um, as Mount Calvary. Okay? And so the DMT, which is called um, dimethyl um, um, traplophane, or traplamine, uh, we find that from this book called, um, it's called the Spirit Molecule, DMT, that um, this is, I guess you would say, like a transmitter, a neurotransmitter of um, serotonin and um, the homomelatonin. And it's the purest concentration of it, right? And they claim that DMT uh, from birth lasts until puberty. And then when the pineal gland begins to calcify, become partially calcified, which that happens within um, 5 to 10 percent Africans, 20 to 35 percent Asians, and 60 to 80 percent Europeans. This is based on the research by um, Dr. Richard King in his book, African Origin of Biological Psychiatry. All right? This is what he states. Now, the pineal gland will still produce melatonin even after the, calcif- after the pineal gland is calcified to regulate the sleep pattern. Mm. But it will no longer uh, secrete um, DMT or penoline. Therefore, this, for those who have an uncalcified pineal gland, you may release DMT, but it has to come through tantra kriya yoga, heavy meditations, mm. um, breath exercises, um, you know, uh, you know, and et cetera. You know, it has to be um, purified. Kriya yoga. Right, Tantra Kriya Yoga is Kundalini Yoga, or uh, you know, the combination of Hatha Yoga, um, Bhakti Yoga, um, yoga and etc. All these is a combination. So Tantra is a combination of all um, eight so-called yoga systems. Now, during a natural death experience, the pineal gland will release um, the last of the DMT, and along with the penoline, to flood the brain once again. So they claim that it's only produced during the time of birth and then at death, but that's not true. If you practice mm-hmm. these um, scientists, these um, sciences, um, it can still be produced. As a matter of fact, for those who are the sons and daughters of God, um, there's a gland at the um, top of the roof of the mouth called the um, epiphany gland or the talu gland based on the, verdict, um, the Vedic script or on Vedic teachings, they call it the Talu gland. Um, in English, we refer to it as the epiphany gland. Um, Dr. Deborah Blair spoke about this years ago, but there's, there's a mound um, there in which that, in the center of the mound, is a hole there. Well, when the DMT is produced in the brain, you know it is because it produces this honeydew, which is actually the reason why in the Bible, the land of Canaan was called the land of milk and honey. The milk and honey was talking about um, um, what we call melatonin and serotonin, which actually is DMT, um, in its refined state, which is melanin, in which that it, it drops, the, um, the dew comes down from the third ventricle into that hole into your mouth. And if you swallow mm-hmm. this sweet substance of honey, what happens is that it rejuvenates your cellular structure. Okay? Mm-hmm. But that comes through the meditation um, heavy meditation exercises, um, you know, in which that, that is really the anointing in which that is being spoke of when the oil anoints you on your forehead. That, that forehead is somatic to the place of the third eye, which is the pineal gland. So when the pineal gland is screeched that chemical, um, you are anointed. You become the anointed one, which is a messiah, a messenger, all right, because not only will it rejuvenate your cellular structure, it also gives you the gifts. Um, which is mentioned within First Corinthians, the twelfth chapter. So that's what we're talking about too. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, that's um, uh, that was cleared up a lot of things. Cleared up, cleared up. Look, it, it adds on to the, the to the paragraph I was reading uh, from your book, The First World Order. You know, mm-hmm. Dealing with the Uriel 
and uh, the the uh, when he's talking about Mount Calvary. Now, is that uh, uh, symbolic of a higher level of consciousness? Yes. Yes. Mount Based Calvary um, is equivalent to the Aramaic or old Hebrew word um, that we refer to as um, Golgotha. Golgotha means the place of the skull. So it's talking about actually um, the back of the head, which is um, when the Kundalini comes up, the first place that it hit is the reptilian portion of the brain, which is attached to the medulla oblongata, where your past lives and um, previous incarnations are located at. So um, it opens up that doorway. Um, the ancients referred to that area as the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. Okay. They refer to it as the mouth of God. So that's what the medulla oblongata is, is the mouth of God. All right. So um, that means uh, um, C. Minnell, Grandmaster C. Minnell, he taught us that there's three areas in which that the soul incarnates in it, at the heart, at the medulla oblongata, and at the crown or the top of the head, which is the pineal gland. Those are the three places that the soul incarnates at. Um, so that is one of the placements of the medulla oblongata um, that the soul comes in at. So um, when you're doing meditation, heavy meditation, um, the medulla oblongata would be the back area of what we call the frontal um, lobe area or the forehead area called the third eye, which sits right above um, the discrimination um, center, which is in between the eyes, um, in between the eyebrows. That is the discrimination center, but right above that would be um, one of the seven eyes of God or the seven eyes of Allah, as is mentioned within um, the 101 and the 102s. Mm -hmm. Um, those seven eyes correlates to those seven chakras um, along the forehead to the um, hairline um, to that soft spot on top of the head. Um, There's seven eyes that stretch along that path, um, which many occultists don't even speak about. Uh, rarely do they speak about it, just like they don't speak about the seven minor chakras of the heart, you know. Yeah, so that's true. I, I was is, reading you know, a book called The Deception. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. I was, read, I was reading a book called The Deception and Myths of the Bible. Uh, mm -hmm. It was uh, saying that the seven, he was, he was talking about the deceptions and myths of the Bible. But at the same right. time, he was talking about the this, this seven intelligence of Elohim. Exactly. You know, even he puts it out there. You know, uh, what to look for in the Bible. You know, if you really, if you really highly cognizant of uh, uh, the esoteric uh, teachings and of, of esoteric science. Uh, that you'll be studying, but but it takes someone like you or myself or other brothers and sisters that are often to the esoteric science and, and, and occult sciences, as, you know, which is the same thing, to really understand these books. But these books are actually a book, a books of truth. You know, what they, what what they speak in these books. You know, the books of. of Books like your book, The First World Order, uh, The Deception and Myths of the Bible, uh, uh, the, uh, the 16 Crucified Saviors of Jesus right. Christ. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, Egypt, The Light of the World by Gerald Massey, Book 1 and 2. The book of right. the Beginnings by Gerald Massey, Book 1 and 2. And, and you really to understand what they're really talking about, like the, the Aquarian right. Gospel of Jesus the Christ. Mm-hmm. By at least with Levi, you know, and uh, it, it tells you in the book itself you must understand cosmologics. You must be mm -hmm. steeped in cosmology, you know, to right. really uh, uh, understand the book, or else just put the book down. Right. As a you don't know what you're doing. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Exactly. 
Let's go to the phone lines. Anyone calling in yet? Once again, it's 626-414-3535. Any comments, any questions, give us a call. All right. Um, I guess we continue building until that happens, Brother L. Um, any comments? All right. Anything you want to build okay. on? Yes. Uh, I can... Uh, yeah, uh, Dylan, like I said, Dylan again, uh, he was speaking on the uh, the Nation of Islam when they had the, was that the, was that the student of Roman he was speaking on? Right. Exactly. The student of Roman, you know, mm-hmm. uh, dealing with the uh, 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 speed of sound, uh, how, uh, how, far, how fast it travels, because if, you're, if you don't catch it, if your mind don't catch it in time, somebody else will have that thought. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I remember um, Michael Jackson said that if he don't um, record the song the right information down, he said Prince would get it. So that is actually right. That's that is definitely a belief system um, upon, um, among those who um, study this information. Mhm. Mhm. Because uh, uh, the speed of light as well. Uh, it, it deals with uh, although you, you know, like you were saying earlier, the speed uh, 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 the thought process says more powerful than the speed of light. You were saying? I was saying thought, which travels at 24 billion miles per second, is more powerful or faster than light, which only travels at 1,000 and um 86 well 186,000 miles per second. Sound travels at 1,120 1, feet per second. So, um, we understand that sound is what forms geometrical shapes or this so-called apparent physical reality in which that the ancient says that too. If you go to the Vedic text, they tell you that there was a um, quote-unquote a so-called big bang or a sound in which that was produced within the universe in which that still resonates, in which that is um, the sound of Om. So um, if that's the case, then um, that's the sound, and it still um, is vibrating and forming manifestations of physical things or what appears to be physical um things into um existence. Yeah. That 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 when you get like a group of people and when they meditate and doing the breathing exercises and when they produce the om om you know, uh I want to do do that have an effect in the environment that you live in. That, but that oh, yeah, uh, definitely goes back to what you was talking about earlier about being able to manifest what you want into existence. So if everybody there that was doing the meditation, that was breathing, that was saying the own sound, if the thought in which that they had in their head prior to doing that together um, would be so strong upon, you know, being, you know, manifested that, you know, based on the intensity of each individual, the thought can manifest quicker or the fastest based on, um, you know, them doing it, you know, and based on the the amount, you know, of frequency that was done, meaning how many times they repeated it, the sound or that or that particular affirmation or decree or prayer or dicker or mantra or whatever term that you want to refer to it as. So based on that, based on intensity, based on, um, you know, the thought, that is what brings um, those things together. You know, that's that's what manifest, that's how things get manifested, especially if they're sitting in a triangle, um, which symbolizes um, the geometrical shape for manifestation is a triangle. So if they're sitting in a triangle, you know, and they're doing it, then whatever they think about is going to manifest, God. Right. Yeah. Um, um, also, uh, the, the people that have the can, people that has a lot of, uh, like you say, wicked uh, thoughts with mm-hmm. this kind of uh, of uh, knowledge of this kind of science, uh, that mm-hmm. can use in a very wicked way. I was thinking because. If you right. want to cause yeah. something to happen, and I think a lot of the people in the elite and the uh, the uh, uh, you know the elite, we the elite global global elite, know this as mm-hmm. well, and that's how they produce a lot of uh, things and chaos 
that's going on in the world today. And that's that's uh, man, that's 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 deep, you know. But I, I but I think we can, we outnumber them though. I think we do, and we can overcome them. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah, you know. Well, that's uh, the uh, reason why we you know teach what we teach is to be able to do so. You know, matter of fact, um, before we go, I want to uh, speak about Dantian breathing, which do you have three Dantians, and these are places that we speak about where you store energy at. So as you bring the prana in through your crown, bring it in through your melanin, your melanocytes, you have to learn how to store that energy into the body. Um, you store that one of the three Dantians, in particular the lower Dantian, which is the navel chakra, um, where, of course, with the umbilical cord, on with the attach at, you know, you and your mother's womb. You receive n- nutrients, you receive, vest- you know, vitamins and minerals and, and you know, everything, even her thoughts and, you know, um, the father can actually uh, speak to you through the womb. You can receive all of this, you know, through, um, you know, you know, through the umbilical cord. So when the cord is cut, you know, um, you know, the umbilical cord is cut. You still have the etheric cord, you know, um, attached to your etheric parents, you know, uh, which, like we said, you know, is also connected to that civil cord or the etheric cord that we spoke about earlier. So you still receive nutrients, um, vitamins and minerals, through that particular etheric cord, you know, which people still don't understand. So mm. when you store the energy into the navel chakra, um, it produces longevity. When you store it in the back of the heart, um, you know, that's love and compassion. When you store it in your third eye or at the mouth of God, that is a high mm. IQ intelligence. Mm. All right. So, um, we have to learn these areas so you can sit or I have to stand and as you breathe in and out through the nose, you can inhale and visualize a golden ball of light, you know, like a small sun growing in your lower dantian, which is the place of the original chi, you know, um you know, uh and so as you visualize this golden ball, you you it intensifies this glow. Um, which each with each breath, you see the light grow brighter and brighter. You would do this 36 times as you inhale and exhale, and you would want to practice for at least three to five minutes, ten minutes ideal throughout the okay. day. Um, you know, to do one or two Dantian breaths a day um, to recharge your internal system. Mm. Now, okay. What about the AUM, the OM? To maintain your health, you would do six to ten repetitions, two to three sessions okay. per day. For health enhancement, six to ten repetitions, four to six sessions per day. For disease intervention, you would slowly start and build up to 15 to 20 repetitions, 10 to 15 sessions per day. All right, so get started with two to three repetitions once to twice per day is what we recommend. But if you have any um, ailments, any problems, then we call for the disease um, intervention, which is the build up to 15 to 20 repetitions, 10 to 15 sessions per day. Um, so once you get to that level, not only are you recharging your body, but you're rejuvenating it. Now, that's good that you can absorb a lot of energy, but even better is the fact of being able to um, condense that energy and cause an impact. And you do that through the circulation, through a micro or macrocosmic orbit technique, all right? And then um, you take, um, for the man, you would take your left hand and clockwise go around 36 times around your belly in a circle, rubbing it. Then you would take your right hand and go around your belly in a counterclockwise position 24 times, all right? Uh, For the woman, it's the opposite, 
right? It's just the opposite. Um, and of course, like we said, her microcosmic orbit starts from the front up and down the back as compared to the man starting from um, down and up and back around again. So once you learn these techniques, you are able to regenerate yourself any and all times as you choose to and compact the energy into your body, condensing it, you know. Um, this is what the ancients taught, all right. Um, Grandmaster Sanyata Saraswati taught this. Grandmaster Mantak Chia teaches this. So this is taught within um, the Taoist um, Tantra traditions, you know. So um, understand what you're working with and do it on a daily basis like we're talking about. Um, we got a call from 313, every call 313 on the line. Peace. What's Peace. going on, brother? Peace. Dr. Ali right, and right. brother. How you doing? Doing well. Doing good, I'm doing good. Wallace from Detroit, organized man, man. It's good talking to you again. Um, I was calling in regards to uh, um, meat. Far as you know, I'm, I'm trying to work myself off of the meat, and uh, I done got rid of the pork and whatnot. And uh, my queen, she didn't, she didn't went cold turkey, so now I'm kind of a little bit behind behind schedule. But uh, I, what I wanted to know about is uh, what can you speak on the the limitations that meat has. Uh, when trying to achieve this uh, kundalini, um, right? I guess. Well, the only time in which that um, you might can eat meat um, is during the times when the kundalini is running wildly through the bodily system and it's causing or creating dizziness, it's causing other types of um, you know, problems within the um, body. Um, nausea It would be wise in order to Have to ground yourself um, oh. Mr. Sanyata told me um, That I was like airy fairy Because a lot of the energy Was you know You know Running on that level Matter of fact he told me that there was something missing I was doing energy work on him And he was like oh yeah I feel your energy Yeah good 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 it's powerful But then yeah. he said but there's something missing, and I said, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, well, what's missing from energy? And um, he told me that I need to eat some meat. And I looked at mm. because at the time I was a vegetarian mm. for 20 years. Wow. And so, um, but I understood what he meant because I went to go have a blood test done, and I found out that I was on B12 deficient. Mm. So mm. I had to, you know, increase my intake of B12. And mm. you can do that through um, green leafy vegetables. You can do that through corella, spirulina, or wheatgrass, alfalfa. Um, and also I added in the 12 bioplasmic um, sea, um, um, salts, what's called muscle or cell salts or nutritive right. blood salts. Um, added that in, and that comes through um, homeopathic product or either um, taking dandelion on a regular basis. You know, so, right. you know, that's what you would be dealing with, you know, uh, making sure that your vitamin B12 levels are kept up to par because guess what? It's vitamin B12 in which they transfer food into energy. Hmm. B12 is the catalyst in which that does that. So if you don't have... Um, you know, vitamin B12, then your energy would be off, and I understood what he meant by that once I, um, you know, got my blood analyzed, you know. Mm. So just make sure that you keep your levels checked as you become a vegan and you go um, more so into the vegetarian. Make sure that you're eating a lot of green leafy vegetables, in particular, like I said, corella and spirulina. Okay. I guess I'm... The meat, that makes up for the meat. Don't eat... Um, tofu, because a lot of people, when we was coming into this uh, vegetarian thing, we would eat a lot of tofu, um, you know, which is a soy product, you know, 
But um, we discovered that, you know, a lot of the soy products and which that is used now to make plastic, you know. Right. Um, we also realized that tofu um, and soy products has a lot of estrogen, too much so for the male species in which that it begins to shrink his penis and testicles, you mm. know, and make them sterile. Wow. Right. So it, now you pretty much touched on the physical aspect of it, but the, I mean, on the spiritual aspect, is the, are we saying the that? The spiritual aspect is that um, um, the chemicals from meat, which has a lot of um, steroids in it, um, a lot of it if you're not getting organic meat, but it has fear within it, which means a lot of adrenaline. Um, if you eat that type of thing, then it causes an overload of chemical responses within your body. Um, meat cause a overload of um, adrenaline in the, in the um, adrenaline glands, which are part of the ductless gland system that sits right above your kidneys. Um, it produces a lot of, um, you know, white blood cells, you know, within the immune system or what is called your defense system because of the situation in which that is um, taking place. You know, mm -hmm. your body has to defend itself against um, pathogens and bacteria and viruses and so forth and so on. You know, right. what called viruses, I should say, which is actually free radicals um, for the truth of the matter. Right, right, right. Um... Another question. Um, do you have any? I was looking for a detox of. Uh, I wanted to jump on a detox of candida, and because I, I got all my right. detox. Right. Well, we have a product called Worm Be Going, because that's actually what yeah. candida is. Is actually um, parasites and worms. Um, oh wow! In which that uh, in the Worm Be Going, you have black walnut, clove, garlic, as well as also. Um, What's the other one? Yellow, um, yellow dock. Right. Uh, yellow um, dock, okay. Right. right. So all of these um, herbs together creates a, um, a detox. Oh, wormwood. It has wormwood in it. So all of these um, together creates a um, detox within the body in which they get rid of parasites, bacteria, viruses, and um, worms. Um, all at the wow. same time. So, what is your uh, what's your uh, take on diatomaceous earth also being used? Um, Food grade. Diatomaceous earth is good to get rid of um, parasites and um, worms also. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. All right. That's what's up. Um, I guess. Uh, can I ask one more question? Or yeah, go ahead. Uh. Okay. Um, lately, uh. Well, obviously, I've had it several times where I've had a, a, a dream where um, it's almost like a, it feels like a force uh, like holding me down. Like, a, it literally feels like an invisible uh, entity. Right, that's or, paralysis. That is on what's called in the South, the witch is right on your back. And wish that what is right. going on is that your soul has not come back into your body upon awakening and your body woke up before that could take place and so you have to be still so that process of soul renting the body can take place. Ah. Uh, okay. So it's not a, another a negative energy or something that have everything to do with that. No, not necessarily. Um is it upon aw um, awakening from sleep? Uh I guess so, yeah. I mean uh, I mean, I've had one where uh, where I actually, um, where me and my wife, we were in the living room, and she was telling me that, you know, there, we, we, I was inside my house in this particular dream, and my wife was saying, you know, there's something in the house or whatever, but she was cool about it. And then I just kind of jumped up and like, where are you at? You know, like that. And then all of a sudden, like this force, this same type of force, like uh, held me down of some sort. I've had that, hmm. but then another one. But I had another one where it felt like, yeah, like you said, like I was on, on the bed and it was like a paralysis. So I'm just wondering, are they related oh, or? You know. Right. So what you want to do in both regards, I can begin to um, start garbing yourself in white light, 
or gold light in order to repel the negativity um, away mm. from you. If there's any negative um, spirit within the house, you would simply sage the house. Or you can use not just sage, but you can also use sandalwood, petroleum, um, or either um, you can use frankincense or frankincense and myrrh or myrrh. Um, those herbs or uh, incense um, help us with getting rid of negativity. And you will ask that spirit in which that is there. If they do not mean any um, good or they mean harm, then um, leave now. Right. And we'll go right. through each, um, um, in each corner of the house and center of the room in each um, portion or room of the house and um, make that request. Right. Now, that was a dream. That wasn't something that actually happened to me, but you still feel the same way that it, it probably definitely... Right, 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 right. Well, I mean, that still means that you're being attacked in the dream world, Ock. And if that's the case, then that's what you need to, um, you know, that's what you need to do. You still need to do the same thing. Um you know, because what is attacked in the dream means that it will oftentimes begin to start being manifested on earth because the astral plane acts just like rain. What's up must come down. Mm. Wow. Okay. All right. All right, Doc. I appreciate your help, man. Um, I guess I'll get at you uh, when you get to the, to the D. Let me know ahead of time so I can get that on for you, baby. All right, Doc. I, I sure will. All right. Peace. Peace. All right, we got Erico 850. Erico 850, you're on the line. Hey, buddy, this is uh, Sister Head of Rule. I wanted to ask a question. What kind of meat um, exactly were you talking about um, that um, the Senyata was talking about when telling you that you needed to eat? What was it? Oh, he didn't specify, but the only thing I could eat because my digestive system can't take coarse meat. And I've been off the pork for damn near 30 years. So um, the only thing which that he could have been talking about was possibly meat, uh, was uh, fish. And, um, you know, that's about as far as I can um, do anyway. Anything else is too heavy for my system. Yeah, okay, because the reason why I said that, because I've been off pork for years. I'm just 25 years old, and I got into this knowledge at uh, roundabout, or well, I say I was getting out of elementary close to middle school, yeah, no, I stopped eating pork once I dug once I started digging into more our culture and everything. So I, right, right. I, I, I stopped eating when I was a teen, too, so, yeah. And I was well, headed towards more of a vegan well, lifestyle, but I'm not you know, quite saying I'm a vegan yet more because um, I, well, I eat lean meat, well, not anything heavy or anything. Well, I had chicken, well, like earlier, but well, I haven't well, right. had it well. I'm so uh, over that. I'm tired of chicken anyways. I haven't eaten chicken for a long while. But what I've been recently, well, since last week, well, last Wednesday, or, um, Dr. Elaine Bay, he was, well, I was on here early. I was asking about you know, um, the Pacific, well, as I was having, well, do well, the condition that the doctors were diagnosing me with epilepsy. And he was saying that um, I needed to take more, have more um, vitamin B12 and B6. And I noticed that when I was at work, well, during lunchtime I would go uh, to grab, like, the quickest thing, like, the making, that was tuna fish. And then I found out that, yeah, tuna, sardines, and salmon and stuff like that, which I love salmon. Right, it has so much mercury in it. High, right. right. Yeah, high uh, B12 and B6. So that's what I've been eating right. a lot of it now. Can be, but tuna fish, being that it's a large um, um, fish, um, has may have too much um, radiation and too much um, mercury, um, mercury in it. So... You know, that's that's right, another thing, that? you know, that, mm-hmm. Oh, go ahead. No, that, that's what I was going to say. So, you know, you just have to, you know, um, be wary of that, too. Okay, yeah, because where I am, like, well, in the small city in which I live here in Florida, I don't even have any, like, particular areas um, that check, well, check your levels, like blood levels and everything and see what, like, well, um, vitamins and well, minerals and stuff that you're lacking or that you need, because I heard well, I was listening to some of Polite's tape like earlier when I first started listening to um, Doctor York, and well, I, um, I saw some of Polite's on tape and he was talking about yeah too about 
I just, well, the males, but females and stuff like that, and getting their levels checked to see what minerals they're missing out of their body. But um, well, I haven't found any place like yeah, that in this that small little city in which I live. Mm-hmm. See, I don't even think they have anything like that. Right. Well, yeah, definitely. Um, we have to check the levels and see how the blood is um, doing. When the blood palates are, you know, um, have some distance between them and they're not clumped together, then you're getting some good oxygen within the blood. But when they're clumped together, um, there's a deficiency of oxygen. So you have to begin to start doing some deep breathing exercises, um, you know, or some other things. Um, you get you need more enzymes within the blood. You know, the enzymes aren't breaking down um, the food um, because you might not you might be deficient of it. So you might need more enzymes. Um, you may, might need um, more um, probiotics. You know, in order to um, you know help keep the body you know and um, you know in a good in a good um, you know in a good way. You know what I'm saying? Because what happens with probiotics, what it does is um, help digest the food so that the food don't become a um, hindrance to you. And, um, you know, and your cells don't attack itself, in which that becomes an immune deficiency, such as lupus and so forth and so on. Um, so you, know, you have to make sure that you're getting the right things so that you can, um, you know, maintain that health. So, you know, those are some of the things that you definitely would want to do. Yeah. All right, Ben. I got you. Okay. All, All right. right. Appreciate you. Thank you. Head ahead, Ruth. Peace. Thank you. Peace. Peace. All right. We're going to go to area code 470. Area code 470, you're on the line. Peace, peace. 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 I just wanted to comment on uh, the DMT and something that yeah. I think is taboo or overlooked that can help basically uh, tap into that DMT, which is mushrooms, cubenzas to be oh, specific. Yeah. If you look oh, at the yeah. chemical compound of it, it's similar to DMT as far as being a trip to me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Um, one of the good brothers, um, Dr. Um, you know, Martial artist Kalindi Ehi. Um, yeah, that's what I was going to comment on. Down yeah. That information. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, I've been I've been messing with him for about I say five years. So just off experience, I can say one of the first effects you feel is a deepening of your breath. It basically kind of shows your body what to do, so that when you don't take them, you know what to do already to bring about that effect. And you know, deepen that basically, you can go into it. Right. Right. Also, definitely, I think um, it's taboo because people think they'll hallucinate on them. And I think it's the, the, the definition is twisted as far as hallucinate. When you take them, you're not going to see Mickey Mouse running across your, your screen, right. basically. Or you know, it's more in the room, exactly. Exactly. It's more of a visualization thing, so it's all within. So I think we should kill that taboo. And they're illegal as well, so, you know, don't run out and ask everybody for them. But, you know, I think that will definitely help in the production of it. Right, right. I wish that is... Um you know, that can be definitely useful in order to help gain insight into your psychic abilities and, um, you know, your um, um, supernatural or, um, you know, super paranormal experiences, you know. So we definitely do recommend that. It can definitely be utilized um, in conjunction with one's, um, you know, various arts, which they might study, like we said, the various energy modalities. Mm-hmm. And with the knowledge of that and how to breathe in combination with the use of them takes it to the next level versus just recreational use and getting to look around to see things, you know, change or whatever the case may be. You definitely could take a trip within when you know that information. No doubt. I right. appreciate that. I... So, yeah, man, that's all I wanted to call and comment on. I appreciate all the knowledge you put online, and I'm going to continue watching and learning and applying as well. Appreciate it, guys. Right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Peace. All right, we're going to go to Eric Cole, peace. We're going to go to Eric Cole 580. Eric Cole 580, you're on the line. Hello. I was just wondering um, about, like, I've been drinking for a while, and but still trying to do my spirituality and breathing techniques and everything. And um, I know that affects the kidneys and the liver and everything else, but just...
mentally and spiritually, how would you think I'd go about that with just dealing with drinking, period? All right. Um, drinking as far as no, I know, the spirit? No, yeah, the spirit. And, and I know it's like I feel like I'm a spiritual person, but I feel like I can't get there if I can't even control, you know, drinking, you know? Like, yeah, drinking right. What spirit. I recommend studying, brother, is on Reiki, um, Ushi Reiki, U-S-U-I, Reiki, R-E-I-K-I. Right. There's a symbol there called Hanshi Shishonen, which helps with habits and addiction. Yes, yeah, that's that what it is. Yeah. to infuse your auric fill with, in which that can stop you or lessen the effect or your wants or need of um, a spirit sock. Um because you would be infusing your own spirit with the power of God or with the Elohim. Um, and that's what would be happening. Because, like, like, I totally agree. I'm, thank you for that because I was studying massage therapy, so I totally believe in Eastern medicine more than Western medicine. And, um, exactly. And everything you preach is just the truth. And um, so I knew I would ask. I didn't want to seem crazy because I'm like, you know, I know everybody else are vegans and they're ahead and stuff, but I'm going, you know, I have my problems, you know. And um, so I was just seeing if you could help me out with that, but I'll check that out. And um, any other thing you can um, drop me before we get off the line? Hello? Um, as far as, um, you mean any other Like any other. Right. Well, um, um, you already know that there's a deficiency of B6. And um, that also is probably what led to the addiction, too, or to the need or the want of it. Um, so right. you want to increase your B6 um, intake as well as also, um, you know, your zinc, your vitamin E um, levels as far as um, minerals and vitamins. But even better would be a particular herb. Um, the herb in which that you can um, do is um, for addiction is... Uh, can you spell that for me, please? Oh, catnip. C-H-A-M. C-H-A-M-O-M-I-L-E. Okay. And, mm-hmm. Uh, th- thanks, and man. K-A-T-N-I-P. Okay. Thanks. Right. Those two help with um, um, ending addictions. If you take those on a daily basis, I would recommend in your case probably two to four cups a day. Are. Okay, yeah, you're definitely right. And I feel like once I get to that point, I'll be the guy that I'm supposed to be, you know, and more than that. Because I still right. practice my spirituality, but I can't, if, I'm a, if I have an addiction, I can't be the, the full, you know, full-fledged God, I feel like, you know. So, but thanks for your, thanks for your help, I mean. All right, you're welcome, out. All right, later, man. All right, peace. All right, peace. 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 All right, um, Brother L, any closing comments before we head up off of here? Oh, yeah. Like I always say it, I say it again, always a pleasure uh, dropping this science with you, Dr. Arlene. You know, uh, appreciate you, Ock, and um, thank you for coming on tonight, and um, checking things out, you know, and um, being a co-host, you know, the wonderful co-host that you are. And, um, you know, let's do it again next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we out. Peace, y'all.